Neuroplasticity is the word that I want you to remember. Neuroplasticity. Okay, neuroplasticity means the brain's ability to change and adapt in both structure and function. And that is a lifelong process. Isn't that cool? Yes, it is very rich in early years. <laughs> so there's a lot we can do in children, probably more than we can do in adults. However, as long as you're living, there's something you can do to keep tapping into neuroplasticity because it can go in a positive way or a negative way, right? You can build positive plasticity or negative plasticity. And that's a choice that we must make. Now that you know, you have to make that choice. So we can have, especially here in relation to a brain injury, but think of it even without brain injury, we can have adaptive brain alterations uh, or we, have, we can have maladaptive brain alterations. And so um, in our methods, we take advantage of the more adaptive methods, uh, methods that we can tap into to create positive healing, positive neuroplasticity. So the way the brain works is that when you have a brain injury, the areas of the brain injured, your brain knows about it. And your brain knows that signals are not getting through in those particular pathways. And it starts avoiding them and, and taking the path of least resistance. And as that happens, the areas that we're using less and less and less and less, we can put that into the maladaptive category. We get this depression in function in those areas. And they eventually do die. And so what we do in functional neurology is we try to identify what are those pathways? Where are the regions that are deficient, that are weakened? And find ways to build endurance in those areas, get the brain to use those pathways. And that's why when we were looking at eye movements earlier, you know, eye movements are powerful because the visual system is the only system that taps into every part of the brain. We can get information about every part of the brain through the eyes. So what we were looking at earlier, when we were seeing cases where there was maladaptive situations and all of a sudden they're you know, positively ad adapted, and then we go five months later, 10 months later, a year later, and they're still good because the brain is now using it differently through everyday experiences. In more severe cases, we need to be a lot more aggressive and a lot more intentional about making these changes. In some cases, it happens quickly and naturally and easily. So we can have aging with long-term depression or aging with long-term potentiation. I'm not necessarily talking about the condition, the depression condition, but meaning at a cellular level, the brain cells can depress. They can depress or weaken in function. As we age, we can have that, or we can make the choice and have long-term potentiation. This is the real word in neurology. And so we can have weakening or strengthening of synapses. These are the connections within the brain, all right? The classic stereotype of aging with long-term depression or weakening of these synapses is the person who likes their routine and does not want to deviate from that routine. Everything the same every day, blah, 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 right? That's comfortable. I kind of like that. Mental inflexibility. Have you come across that mental inflexibility? So you want to be flexible mentally and physically. Physical immobility will also lead to weakening of these synapses. The brain needs newness. It needs to be challenged. It needs to be pushed. It needs to be uncomfortable. You gotta be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's the key. New, 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 new. That's the difference between walking on a treadmill in a stationary space and walking on a trail in the woods with a ground that's constantly varying. Your brain responds very differently both. It actually starts shutting down if you're doing the same thing on the treadmill all the time, right? But it's constantly engaged on this uneven terrain. And so new activities, new skills, learn new things. You never want to stop learning. You want to start being physically active as much as you are capable and you want to keep learning, 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 learning. If you do that, you will have long-term potentiation. And so in this office, when we help patients with these kinds of challenges, 
we find ways to tap into the weak areas and we strengthen those. But it has to go way beyond the visit in here. It has to be applied in every aspect of life where you are challenging yourself, you are making yourself mentally flexible. It means not stubborn. <laughs> I have a trait of stubbornness as well. And we, I think we all do to a certain extent. You want to use that stubbornness in a productive way. That's really what I want to say. It's not a bad thing to be stubborn if you use it to your advantage.